Let's pivot now to the Middle East. Oil was up nearly 3% earlier on news that Iran dispatched a warship to the Red Sea. This was after the U.S. Navy destroyed three boats of Iran-backed Houthi rebels, killing 10 militants, according to the AP. Shipping company Maersk is now saying they'll pause, continue to pause all transit through the Red Sea until further notice. And meanwhile, tensions between Israel and Lebanon are on the rise after an explosion reportedly killed the deputy head of Hamas. For more here, let's bring in Fred Kemp. He's president and CEO of the Atlantic Council and a CNBC contributor. And Fred, I guess this is the larger concern is that we start talking about kind of a multifaceted Middle East uh, war or series of conflicts. Uh, yes. I had, look, Happy New Year, Kelly. Um, people have been worried about an expanding war, but what this is also confronting uh, U.S. officials, Biden administration officials with, is that they're not going to be able to avoid the fact that Iran is behind almost everything in one way or another. Uh, there is no October 7th Hamas attack without the support of Iran. Uh, there are no attacks on shipping in the Red Sea, support of the Houthis without Iranian weapons and without Iranian backing. Uh, you talked about Lebanon, the threat in Lebanon. That doesn't happen happen without the proxy, uh, Iran's proxy, Hezbollah in Lebanon. And so uh, the real question is, how do you get to Iran over time? Because without getting to Iran, you're not going to solve all the rest of these problems. And I think that's the, that's the really tricky thing that pe people are looking at. And of course, there's short term and there's long term in that. And, right. Uh, yeah. What, what is the Biden administration's strategy here as it relates to Iran? And, and the, the, the escalation of tensions now, how, what does that tell you might be going on behind the scenes? Yeah, I've been talking to people in the White House over the last couple of weeks, uh, and they've laid out quite a complex agenda for the entire year. It's a, it's a pretty complex year with wars in the Middle East and, and Europe and tensions with China. What they want in the Middle East is for things not to escalate and to, uh, and to put uh, the situation in such a place where they might be able to start normalizing relations again between Israel and, and Saudi Arabia. Uh, now, that may not seem directly linked to Iran, but the long-term play with Iran is if you can have the, the uh, Israel, the moderate modernizing uh, Arab states, uh, expanding their area of prosperity, of modernization, it makes the Iranian rot, the government rot, the corruption, uh, the slow growth, uh, the little that they're providing their people, it makes that stand out even longer. Right. But that's the long game. The short game has to be how do you counter the Houthis and how do you counter Iran now? Did we have any further normalizations between Israel and Arab countries after or during this administration so far? No, what you've done is you've kept them alive. And so the Abraham Accords countries have kept this all alive. Uh, but uh, the administration had moved things forward uh, to the extent that one thought that a Saudi-Israeli normalization might have been possible in the first quarter, first half of this year. Right. That, of course, has been put on ice, but they haven't given up on it. Uh, what they need is they need Israel uh, to reach some sort of an agreement with pa the Palestinians over time that at least gives a path to the state so that they can return to a normalization path. I, I think overall they think that's the only way that one returns to a path that both counters Iran, supports Israel, and builds upon normalization in the region. 